clickbait is everywhere and it's ruining online spaces. People are getting duped by misleading titles and subject lines into clicking on absolute garbage. And the people using these tactics are manipulative shills just trying to farm clicks and ad dollars. It's an epidemic and it needs to stop. So that's the video I think a lot of people would want me to make on this topic. But it's not the video that I want to make. And I want to help you understand why. I'm Drex and I make videos about flow arts and poi spinning. I like sharing the love of these arts to benefit your body and brain, but I also on occasion like to branch out into adjacent topics. I am after all a content creator in addition to those other things, and I do like talking about that part of my job too. And in this video, I want to talk about why clickbait is everywhere now, but also why it kind of has to be and what it says about us that this has happened. But before we dive in, I want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecha, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing businesses and what they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. And special thanks to non-business friends of the channel, Johnny Howard, Lay Machinsky, and Becca Bekunen. Thank you all so very much for your support for my work and my mission. So, a few days ago, I got an email from a guy who was very angrily unsubscribing to my email list. His grievance was that my email titles had gotten too clickbaity, and you know, he's not wrong. I have been making changes to the subject lines of my emails, but I personally think that it's for a good reason. Why have I been making those changes and why have they put him and I at loggerheads? I actually think those are really important questions to ask, and in so doing, there's a lot to learn about the tension between artist and audience in the social media era, as well as who we are versus who we think we are. But before we dive too deeply into that, I think it's important that we define what clickbait really is, because I'm going to be using the word a lot in this video. Personally, I think the best framing I have seen of this concept is the one that Derek Muller of Veritasium used on his video exploring this very topic. According to Derek, clickbait is content whose main purpose is to attract attention and encourage visitors to click on a link to a particular web page. Yes, I know that he offered up multiple definitions in that video, but this is the one that I'm going with for simplicity's sake. Now it has to be said that I have very deliberately been changing the style of my email subject lines and video titles recently. Why is that? My channel enjoyed an unprecedented surge in popularity early in the pandemic that lasted for the better part of a year and then slowly faded. I had centered the channel around tutorials with the occasional vlog, review, or video essay on a variety of topics. But the tutorials were by far the most popular option my channel had to offer. Just a few years before, I'd gotten really interested in keyword targeting and had gotten really good at ranking on YouTube and Google searches associated with poi tutorials and tricks. I'd found several formats that really tended to draw a lot of eyeballs, including list videos of my top five favorite poi tricks of different categories and my What Comes Next series. But as frequently happens on online platforms, the algorithms started to shift and keywords became less and less of a consideration on the performance of videos. And it should be said, creatively, I was looking for new challenges and new topics to cover too. So not only did I start exploring other formats for videos, I also started exploring other ways to get people to watch. If keywords in search were no longer a reliable way to reach people, then I had to find other ways to continue to reach an audience. At this point, all the big heads in content creation are saying that it's really coming down to thumbnails and titles. So I started investing more time there. I started asking myself whenever I watched somebody else's video, why was I clicking on it? And I'd use the answers I'd arrive at to guide my approach to my own content. Sometimes it worked, other times it didn't. But this project extended to my email list too, where before my subject lines were pretty dry but accurate descriptions of what was to be found in the full email. I started trying out different subject lines that would connect with that content, but would arouse what I keep seeing referred to as the curiosity gap. The curiosity gap occurs when we see a teaser for something, say a phrase, image, or snippet of video, and we just have to find out more about it. It gives us just enough to want to know more without giving us the satisfaction of knowing exactly what we're signing up for. So back to that mailing list subscriber here. Because within his rage quitting, there's a really important piece of this puzzle to understand. He has received over 40 emails from me during his time on my list. 
but the only four he's ever opened were the most recent ones that I sent. And yes, that's right. These were the ones with the clickbaity subject lines. In other words, Bruce isn't mad that I'm sending clickbait subject lines. He's mad that they work. He's mad that I'm actually getting him to open up those emails that I pay MailChimp every month for the ability to send him. And I get it, believe me, I do, because I get frustrated with clickbait too. Most often I get frustrated when I see a title or subject line that seems to promise one thing, that builds my anticipation and then gives me something completely different once I finally click on it. There are absolutely ways in which clickbait can be really deceitful. But here's the problem. The alternative is that I just keep wasting money sending this guy and others like him emails that they're never going to open up. And I know, I know, I'm totally framing this as a binary and it is not. I will absolutely confess that I strongly dislike clickbait and because of that, my own attempts to write similar titles and subject lines are still pretty crude. I'm still figuring out the art to this and I appreciate those of you who are being patient with me as I do so. I also think there's something to unpack from my own dislike of clickbait to understand both why I'm so bad at it as well as why people like that subscriber are upset that I'm learning how to do it. For the record, he's not the only person who has complained about my attempts to learn how to use this concept but that's not gonna stop me from continuing to learn. So like most people, I like to think of myself as a pretty smart guy. A 2018 paper found that 65% of American adults believe that they are of above average intelligence. On most days, I like to think that I am too. We like thinking of ourselves as smart and one of those things we associate with being smart is the capacity to verify information without bias and not to be easily manipulated. There's no shortage of people who believe that they are too smart to be misled. And yet, there's a book that I really love to quote from time to time called Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman that I legitimately think might be one of the most fascinating books I've ever read in my life. And one of my favorite parts of it is how it pokes holes in our conception of how smart people should be able to make smart decisions. One such example is a very famous problem. Let's say you go down to the corner store and pick up a toy baseball and a toy baseball bat. In total, you spent a dollar and 10 cents on both, and you spent a dollar more on the bat than you did on the baseball. How much did you spend on each one? Now, I have given this problem to dozens of friends, physicists, lawyers, mathematicians, teachers, and it's wild because in presenting the problem, I can see them looking for the trick in it. They arrive almost instantly at what seems like a very clear answer and ask themselves, that can't be it, right? but still being drawn towards that very answer, even if they're skeptical of it. If you guessed that the bat cost a dollar and the ball cost 10 cents, then congratulations, you gave the same answer as 80% of the people who answer this same question for the first time, including myself. And we are all wrong. The difference in cost between a dollar and 10 cents is 90 cents, not a dollar. But because we grasp onto what seem like crystal clear markers in the formulation of the problem, our brains refuse to let go of these two numbers unless under great duress. The answer is actually that the bat cost a dollar and five cents and the ball cost five cents. And it seems obnoxiously obvious in retrospect, right? The difference between people who opt for the first answer versus the second answer though, isn't a question of intelligence. It's a question of what Kahneman refers to as system one versus system two thinking, wherein system one is fast, intuitive, and satisfying. System two is slow, difficult to parse, and frequently unpleasant to engage in precisely because it requires us to engage more of our brain's resources in utilizing it. Okay, so why am I talking about a behavioral psychology problem in a video about clickbait? Well, it's because we as human beings are prone to impulse and finding quick answers to questions, and many of us who pride ourselves on being smart hate being reminded that we still do this. Because really, people wouldn't use clickbait if it didn't work, if those titles didn't engage the curiosity gap. If it were not easier to click on them, then it would be to engage in system two thinking. Every time I click on something that engages that curiosity gap, I know that I certainly feel angry and frustrated when the resulting content seems to fall maddeningly short of the expectations that the title generated for me. And it becomes a humbling reminder that I too can easily be misled. 
My frustration and anger is not at the author of the clickbait, it's at myself for realizing that I was gullible enough to fall for it. And it also becomes a problem for me learning how to do it myself, because I have spent so much time resenting clickbait that I avoided learning from it. There is an art to finding a balance between creating a title that is so misleading that it will disappoint everyone versus coming up with one that does arouse the curiosity gap and also delivers real satisfaction for the viewer if they click on it. And I have to say, one of the weirdest elements of getting pushback on this is that when people complain about clickbait titles, whether they realize it or not, they're basically saying, hey, I'm cool with you creating content just so long as you don't actually try to get anybody to watch it. Now don't get me wrong, there's a lot of clickbait out there that does not deliver on one's expectations, but the problem is that we are now at a point in the maturation of online content where we can't really work without it. After all, which title would you be more likely to click on? This Poi Trick Broke Me or Behind the Back Waist Strap Combo? The former engages your curiosity. It feels relatable and you wonder what could possibly have been that hard for me. The latter tells you exactly what it is, and because of that, you're likely to leave it for when you're in the specific mood to watch it, if you even remember to watch it at all. Clickbait exists because in an information economy built on one of our most scarce resources, that is human attention, the ability to appeal to people was always going to be a race to the bottom. We basically have two extremes of how we engage with content right now. It's either stuff that arouses our curiosity gap to crave answers so much that we can't help ourselves to them, or stuff that is so familiar, unchallenging, and predictable that it's comforting to engage with. The latter really only works for Star Wars and MCU movies. The former is the realm of YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. We as content creators have to play this game or we become irrelevant. And I really want to be clear here. I'm actually okay with this. The human brain always lags behind the technology that surrounds it, and we have to play catch up for how it engages with said technology. I'm not bemoaning the fact that in order to stay relevant, I have to experiment with clickbait. Though I am a little frustrated by how long it's taking to learn the techniques of it. But once upon a time, keyword targeting was really hard for me too and I got a lot better at it over the years. This too, I shall work to improve on. Thanks to all of you for being patient with me while I do. Did you get anything out of this video? Please leave a comment, like, subscribe, and share to keep the conversation going and to help other people find this video. This video would not be possible if it were not for the wonderful support of all of these amazing people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon, and they, along with the people listed down in the description, help to make this video and all the videos on my channel possible. Thank you one and all for your support. Do you like my videos? Do you like my flow sessions, vlogs, reviews, combos, and more? I'm on a mission to try and bring poi spinning and flow arts to the wider world and help people connect with their brains and their bodies. So help me do it. Head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. You can do that at the link down in the description or the card that just popped up if you are watching on YouTube. There you can get access to a whole host of awesome rewards and even better, you'll be helping me along in my mission. Do check that out, please, and thank you. And if you'd like to check out more of my videos on content creation, I'm going to leave a link to a playlist of videos on that topic down in the description as well as up on screen if you are watching on YouTube. The YouTube algorithm also thinks that you'll like this top video based upon your viewing history too, so maybe give that a shot as well. Thanks so much for watching, and make sure to get outside and flow today. I'll see you with a brand new video on Wednesday. Peace.